There are two things that are well known to help with my mental health, and interestingly, both of them require earbuds. I guess to tune out all the noise, like that. <laughs> <laughs> What's really interesting is I'm wearing them right now. Look how discreet they are. So these are the Raycon earbuds. They start at about half of the price of any other premium earbud on the market, and they sound just as amazing as other top brands that you know. The earbuds also come with all different sizing so that you can fit them directly to your ear. They're great for anything that you would use earbuds for, working out, listening to podcasts, listening to music. I like to wear them when I ride the Peloton and I also do my nightly meditation before bed and I listen to a sleep story at night when I go to bed. So I use them for that as well every single day. It's really nice to have this option because if I was listening to a nightly meditation and a sleep story out loud, then Brad would have to deal with listening to that too since we do sleep in the same bed. I also can put my earbuds in and ride the Peloton and not drive everybody else in the house crazy with like the pumped up music that's getting me motivated to ride the Peloton. Same with Brad because he's been getting up really early in the morning and it's best that he does not wake up the rest of the house. So from Raycon, their new everyday E25 earbuds are their best model yet. They have up to six hours of continuous playtime. They have seamless Bluetooth pairing, which is really important for me. There's almost nothing more frustrating than only having 20 minutes to get on the Peloton and ride and not being able to get my earbuds to sync to the Peloton. So this happens seamlessly. Bluetooth, wireless, no wires hanging down on the earbuds. They're discreet, which is really great if you're on a video conference. You don't have anything hanging down there. They have more base and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise isolating fit, which is super important when you have a lot of noise to isolate. I was really impressed the first time I turned on the song to get up. Oh. I was like, I could really appreciate the bass. Oh, for sure. I don't pee. Bear has to go pee. They also come in new fun colors. You need to check them out for sure. I really love this rose gold that I have. All you have to do is go to buyraycon.com slash Brad and Rach. Click the link in the description box. That will get you 15% off your order. Because they're so sleek and discreet, I can very easily lay on my pillow and not get a headache that I do with some earbuds. So these just lay very flush and flat in your ear and it works perfect for falling asleep to a sleep story. So we make the joke that Rachel goes to bed with Matthew McConaughey every night. <laughs> so there's a sleep story on the Calm app that's Matthew McConaughey reading a story and that's the one I put on every single night. Uh, Brad also, he doesn't just snore, he does the, what, one of our subscribers called it the air mattress. I don't snore, Is I don't know what you're talking about. The air mattress release where he like snores on the way in, but then he goes on the way out. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> but these, I don't even hear it anymore. <sighs> Thank you Raycon for sponsoring today's video. Well, I hope you guys are all sitting down because this is crazy. It is almost time to enroll these guys into preschool. So there's a church that's not very far from here, only about a five, oh, awesome. It's only about a five minute drive and they start accepting kids at three years old. So it would just be like two days a week, Tuesdays, Thursdays, from like, I don't know, nine to noon or something like that. What I'm wondering, and Rachel, is like, what's the <coughs> curriculum, curricul curriculum? What's the curriculum for like a three-year-old, you know, going to pre-K? Like, cause obviously these guys already know their ABCs and they're learning numbers right now. And one of our subscribers actually made a pretty good comment. It's like, the teacher would really appreciate, you know, if you learn, if they can pull up their pants, put on their shirt, put on their coat, all the stuff that would save them a lot of time. So we've been working, you know, obviously we, we've been working to do that every day. And Junebug's super independent. She like won't even like let us help put her clothes on. Whereas Bear is kind of the opposite. We're gonna have to like force him to do it. Oh, you didn't do the motorhome? Is that your new favorite book? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She's doing the uh, garage book with the flashlight. the motorhome? It's just so hard to believe that they're almost like starting school. It's just crazy. And I feel like I didn't start school until I was like five. <sighs> Time flies. Soon it'll be her turn. 
Do you want to go to school? Ah, you're so funny. Look at you. Yeah, you do want to go to school? You're so funny. Bear, do you want to go to school? Yeah. Yeah, you ready? Yeah. Is there anything you want to learn about? Yeah. What do you want to learn about? I want to go to school. You want to learn about trucks? Yeah. Anything else? Uh-oh. That's safe. Lindell, do you want to go to school? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you want to learn about? Um, baby dolls. You want to learn about baby dolls? Yeah. Do you want to learn your numbers? Yeah. Um, numbers. Bear, you want to learn your numbers? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll practice right now. It'll be really, well, for one, it'll be interesting to see if they actually have school in person. But for two, it'll be really interesting to see these guys interact with other kids. Like, they don't get any interaction with other kids right now. You know, previously they were at least getting interactions with kids at church, but, you know, recently we've just been doing recently. church online. Recently. 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 Hey, Bear, can you say righty tighty lefty Lucy? Righty tighty Lucy. <laughs> right? I see a tablet right there. Righty tighty? I see the tablet. You, there's, you see a tablet back there? Yeah. Say righty tighty. Righty tighty. Lefty Lucy. Righty tighty. Lefty Lucy. Nailed it. Go, Eloise, go! Go, Eloise, go! Go, Eloise, go! Uh. So Brad just told me that he was talking to you guys about pre-K. I think I'm gonna leave. Baird's sound machine has some birds on it. We always turn his birds, and Lindell's for that matter, and the green light on when it's time to wake up in the morning and from their nap, and they love it. They always go, the birds are back! Uh, so that's gonna be also their cue. This is a perfect segue. That's going to be their cue when we switch them to a toddler bed that it's morning since, you know, they're a little young to be telling time and I think that will just help them know like it'll be orange or pink at nighttime and then in the morning when it's time to wake up it'll be green. So with all that said, it's like we're hitting like these big milestones in all three kids lives and it's I remember feeling this way starting a few months before the twins turned one. Like up until they were about 10 months old, I would say they're, I would like round up how many months they were. I would be like, they're almost six months old. They're almost eight months old. Then around 10 months, I was like, they're 10 months. Even if in one day they were turning 11 months, I would like hang on to the fact that they were 10 months as long as possible. And now that Eloise is turning one year old, in two and a half very short months, it's like these emotions are getting triggered in me. Like they just grow up so fast. And I was, I, I love babies. I always have, like, I love the baby stage and I historically have not always been a huge fan of toddlers until I had my own toddlers and I love them. They're just so funny and they learn so fast. And like, I'm enjoying every second of them being toddlers. Um, I think Brad is, of the two of us, he's a little bit more eager for them to grow up so he can like do more things with them and that's understandable, but um, I guess like every stage is fun in its own way, but it's just happening so fast. And so now we're talking about the twins going to pre-K and we're talking about like the theme for Eloise's first birthday and then we're talking about changing their bedrooms into like their big boy and big girl bedrooms and doing like a toddler bed and it's just it's all happening so fast. But with those things comes like more fun things that we're able to do with them. One of the things I'm excited about is, and we could have already done this, I just had like me and my anxiety, I had a little bit of concern with the sleeping arrangement, but we wanna go out in the boat and like stay the night, cove out, stay the night on the boat. But oh, I'm out of breath because I just rode the Peloton. It's a little bit difficult for me to visualize how we'll handle like the beds because the twins are like too big for a pack and play, but they're too little, like they would roll off of, they have the bunk beds in our boat, the twin bunk beds. I feel like they would roll off of those in the night. Like I don't think they're ready for those. So once they graduate to a toddler bed and they're used to that sleeping arrangement, then we can like, I can more easily visualize going out and sleeping in the boat. And so, 
that will be really fun. Like if we can put the twins in the bunk beds and then we could sleep in the master bed in the front and put Eloise in a pack and play, like we could all just go out and sleep in the boat and that would be so much fun. And it's like they're at an age now where we can explain like what we're doing to them and they'll understand and they'll know it's like bedtime. Whereas at like the age one to two even range where you're out somewhere where they're not used to their environment, it's harder to explain to them. You just kind of have to depend on them just going to sleep. And then if they wake up disoriented, you can't very easily communicate with them. I don't know. It's like iffy how much they're really understanding. So it's just bittersweet, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And things are happening so fast and it just makes me want to like really appreciate where we're at right now. So how do you feel about putting the kids in preschool? I'm, I, I was just saying it's bittersweet. It'll be really, really emotional like with them with their little backpacks on dropping them off and like sending them in. Really? I think so. Don't you think you'll walk in with them the first time? Yeah, I guess that's... I don't know if they'll do like a meet and greet. So is this like an actual school? Yes. Really? Yes. And they take three-year-olds? So it's a preschool, but then they also have school school. So we could, potentially, we could leave them in this school and they have a curriculum up to... Eighth grade, I think. Eighth so. grade. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. And they even have a curriculum for the preschool. Um, it's a church-based curriculum too, so it fits our values. And we do have some friends that go there. So they would like, they would know some people. They wouldn't be in their class, but close. So, I don't know. Bittersweet. Yeah. Are you, are, is there any bitterness at all for you? Uh, no. It's just sweet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just two half days. Did you talk about that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Is it, it's Tuesday, Thursdays, right? Tuesday and Thursday mornings. What time? So it's probably like 8 to 11. Okay. Yeah. So, 8 to 11. Three hours. 8 to 11. <laughs> It's only six hours a week, so. Yeah, it would be just, it would just free up some time for us to get some work done around here. <laughs> and we wouldn't miss them too much probably in that couple hours. Wendell's helping me make dinner. Oh, good job. How did you know how to open that? We're gonna do a Southwest style quinoa. Let's read the package, Junebug. It says, Microwave on high for three and a half to four minutes. Okay, so just set it in there. Perfect. And then let's do four minutes. So I want you to hit the four. Oh. Okay, the four is right here. This one. Yep. Nope. This one. Okay, four, zero. One more zero, zero. And then start. Good job. Now we need a couple of sweet potatoes. Okay. We keep those in here. Okay, you wanna open that? Okay, now we gotta spin it around until we see sweet potatoes. Spin it around. Yay. Keep going. Okay. Yep, keep going. I don't see any yet, keep going. I see some on the bottom. Keep going a little bit. Oh, yep, yeah. those are sweet potatoes. Okay. We probably just need one that we can all share. Okay. So we need to open it up and get one out. Okay. This one? Yep. Okay. Perfect. Good choice. Good job, Junebug. Hello. Oh. Uh -oh. Did you bump your head? Oh, yeah. Ouch. Did it hurt? Uh -uh. Oh, good. Okay. So now we need to poke holes in this okay. and we're going to microwave it after the quinoa's done. It's a microwave kind of night. Yeah. Let's wash it though. Should we wash it? Okay. Let me get you a step. Let me get you a step stool. Hey. Okay. Awesome. Is it nice and clean? Nope, not yet. Good job. Not clean. Not clean yet, huh? Potatoes never really look that clean. They they still look kind of bumpy and weird, even when they're clean. All right, that looks good. 
good. It doesn't look good yet? Let's get it like this. Okay, we don't want to waste water either. It's a fine balance between making sure the potato's clean and not wasting water. Is that good? Uh-uh. Okay, 10 more seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh, did that get you wet? I <laughs> just rubbed it. Okay, you ready? Uh -huh. We're gonna put it on this plate in the microwave, which I just had to clean because we put that bag in wrong side up. Yeah. They leak if that happens. I never knew what would happen if you put it upside down. Not good. They leak. Perfect. Now we need to close it. Let's move this over here. Decided on two sweet potatoes. And then you're gonna do six minutes this time. That would be this one. Can Bear push the zeros? Six. Bear, can you push the zero two times? One. Oh. Okay. Push. push start one more time. Okay, and then Bear push start one time. Nope, this one start. Okay. Oh. No. It's not done. Okay, one more minute. Now we wait. We have to wait six minutes. That's how long it takes. Don't push anything for six so minutes. So we're out for our nightly golf cart ride. We just dropped off Rachel and Eloise because it's almost Eloise bedtime. And this is something new. I haven't seen this before. Really I'm looking at see what this is. If I can get down here. What's that say? Insect trap. Government property. Please do not disturb. We'll get ticks on you. Yeah, you could get ticks on us. Whoa. Ew, look at all those bugs. Huh. There might be some lightning bugs in there. There's just a bunch of dead bugs. I've never seen that before. I wonder if they're just trying to figure out what's natural habitats around here, like what insects, or if they're gonna spray. Let me know if you know. I've never seen one of those before. There's one, two, three, four. Lightning bugs. Number five. You see the lightning bugs? Yeah. Oh, I can't see them. You can't see them? It's a buck, a little buck, young buck. A Just a young buck. Six, seven. I see lightning bugs. You see them? You see the lightning bugs and the deer? Yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. What a gift poop. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a lot of geese poop, he says. He's not lying. I wonder, I wonder where he learned that. It's either seven or eight. I can't remember. I think it's real close to this one. It's either eight or nine, I'm not sure. Eight or nine. I see some Hi, dear. You see some lightning bugs out there, Bear? Yeah. yeah. So was it 10, 11, 12, 13, I What's think? What's that deer? That's a, there's two baby deers and a mommy deer. The mommy's ear is hunched over. Sprinklers came on. Jackpot. Let's see, what were we? I can't even remember how many we were at. Where were we at, guys? 10? 11, 12, 13. So. 14, 15, 16. 14, 15, 16. I think. You want to drive, Kimba? Alright. 